All right, so good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to tonight's webinar. I may take the opportunity to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Marco Eichner. I've been assisting Tickmill since quite a while already, since the very initiation of the Futures and Futures uh, Option Project. And recently I was assigned uh, to implement small exchange with their amazing and our amazing team. And we are very happy that we launched Small Exchange a few weeks ago. And that's the very, very first webinar in cooperation with Small Exchange. Uh, Frank has joined us today from Small Exchange to help us more about uh, the exciting part of Small Exchange and the futures trading for right. every day for every trader. We'll have a Q&A session afterwards, but in the meantime, Veronica behind the scenes uh, is supporting us uh, with answering all your questions. So feel free uh, to open a little uh, button in the middle of the screen and uh, throw in all your questions. So I think that's everything I have to say for now. Without further ado, uh, I'm keen to hand over to you, Frank. Uh, the stage is, is yours. Thank you so much, Marco. Yeah, we've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about here. Small exchange, a very new and exciting uh, futures exchange that we launched here in Chicago. I'm currently on the west side of Chicago, streaming to you all with a lot of information on futures in general. But then also I'm going to dip into what our products have to offer specifically in the future space. So yeah, throughout the presentation, please throw some questions in the Q&A section. Uh, nothing is off limits. If you have questions just on uh, financial markets in general, uh, futures and, and what the difference they are uh, as a derivative relative to uh, stocks and ETFs and everything else. Um, but then also personal to our products here from the small exchange uh, that we're super excited to be on board with Tickmill here. If you got some questions about those as well, please throw them in the Q&A. We'll get to all of those at the end. With all of that being said, I'll give you a little bit of info about myself. I came out of college, started trading at the Chicago Board of Trade here in the U.S. and um, cut my teeth trading interest rates at the Chicago Board of Trade. Since then, I have uh, been brought on to the small exchange to help out with product creation and creating the content, educating people uh, in the future space and with our products as well, uh, because futures have a lot to offer and we're about to get to all the exciting offerings of futures in general. And then our products were really created for that everyday trader, that smaller trader, so that they can get all of those advantages of futures. Before I get into all the exciting stuff, here is a disclosure that I am legally required to put in front of you or else I get in trouble from our compliance team. So just a couple seconds, you can read it if you want. If you don't want to read it, then don't. And we will move on right now. So the Smalls, our main mission here is to make futures trading more accessible to more people. We've got equities, we've got metals, we've got foreign exchange, interest rates, we're about to add energy, we're going to add marijuana very soon. And the whole goal is to not necessarily reinvent the wheel. Like we're not inventing a stock. We're not inventing gold or the next, you know, precious metals or the next currency. What we are doing is making futures trading more accessible to the smaller trader or just the everyday trader who maybe has a decent account size, but hasn't felt comfortable in the futures space for a number of reasons, big contract sizes, confusing contract sizes and futures with those traditional futures products. We're going to get into how smalls make those accessible to more people in a second, but I first want to make a little bit of a case for futures in general. You know, why would you do the extra work to break outside of stocks or ETFs or what you're comfortable with? Well, first of all, the biggest pull for futures is they cost less. They cost about 1% to 25% of the product's worth relative to those stocks that make you put up either 50 or 100%. And so right off the bat, your capital is more efficient when you look to buy or sell a uh, futures on stock as opposed to the stock itself. And uh, this right there is a huge pull for futures and making that extra effort to learn this new product type. Also, 
you get direct ac access to hard to reach markets like commodities. We've got a gold, silver, and platinum product here that just requires a margin of $500. And you get direct access to gold, silver, and platinum. When you buy it, you're long gold, silver, and platinum. When you sell it, you're short those three commodities as opposed to having to go around this with gold or, or silver miners stocks that are that deal in that commodity same with the the oil space you know we're about to launch a future that is direct to crude oil as opposed to having to buy or sell oil stocks so that direct access is essential and it's really uh exclusive to this future space relative to stocks also there's the simplification factor uh within futures whereby you can have a a very large complex ecosystem like a foreign exchange, for example, where you've got you know hundreds of foreign currencies out there in the world. What we do here at the small exchange is we take you know seven of the largest economies throughout the world and those largest currencies that go along with them, bundle them into one basket and create for you one single simple currency product here in the US dollar. And our yield product here is kind of is still in that simple vein, but the flip side of that coin, whereby interest rates are a complex landscape as well, but because they deal with these fractions and these coupon payments and these different values of basis points called DVO1, what we did there to simplify uh, that asset class is create one single yield product whereby you, you read news and, and you do your research in the interest rate asset class by looking at different yields, different percentages. So we gave you a product that is just straight up that one yield, that one percentage of the US treasury rate there. And once again, a nice efficient margin of just a couple of hundred bucks. And now finally, once again, the biggest pull for futures being that efficient capital this is, you know, the simplification is great. Uh, the direct access is great. But at the end of the day, one of the biggest deals here in futures is being able to trade big swings, big moves with not that much capital. You look at the return of the stock market over the last several months, bouncing between zero and 15%. The leverage and efficiency that you get with an equity future as opposed to the equity itself is just bigger swings for that dollar that you're posting, that capital requirement, bigger bang for your buck that will hopefully enhance returns. Of course, there's risk on the other side of that coin, but thankfully the small exchange futures pair this efficiency, these large swings for the smaller trader with small products. So you're getting these bigger percentages, you're getting these bigger swings on smaller products as opposed to high leverage, big swings on big products. So we do try to mitigate some of that risk and give you these uh, large percentage swings, but on smaller products there. So that is the case for futures themselves. Where does the small exchange come in? Well, we take that efficiency, that direct access, all of those advantages that are posed in the futures world, and we pair them with that comfortable feeling you have of trading a stock. Oh, it ticks in pennies and, and all the, it's, it's very comfortable to look at a stock price moving up or down and know that I'm in a world that makes sense to me. And a lot of these futures, uh, traditional futures products, they have different tick increments that, uh, that can throw you off. They, they have different expirations and all these different things that can complicate the process and make it a chore to learn futures. What we do is we take all those uh, efficiency factors, all those direct access um, uh, pros, if you will, in the uh, futures column, when we pair them with that ease of access of stocks, and that creates four small exchange futures here. So you get a, a little bit of a taste of what futures have to offer. Now I want to bring you into the world of what small exchange futures have to offer, because they take all that efficiency and the direct access, and they package it up into a product that's small, standard, and simple. And so you have efficient capital, you know, margin requirements in the single digits of percent. You know, our foreign exchange product, for instance, only requires one or 2% of the total product size, but we pair that with 
a small size that can be tailored to any account. So you can scale that up or down as opposed to some of these traditional futures markets that are already so large that you can maybe only do one contract or none because they're so big. Standardization is also key to small exchange products here. Uh, we have one expiration every month. That's it. No expirations on Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, all over the month. One day on your calendar there. Also, they have all, all the same tick increments, just 0 0.01 for every single product. And each of those 0 0.01s is worth one US dollar as it ticks higher and lower. The construction there, making it extremely easy for you to jump from an asset class like metals to energy, to stocks, to foreign exchange without having to translate it to different expirations, different uh, tick increments and different values altogether, making it very standard there. And that leads us to the last tenet here of the exchange, which is simplicity. We want the context there to be as clear as possible so that you can have an idea on interest rates, you go straight to interest rates. You have an idea on stocks, you go straight to a simple stock market. The last thing we want to do is take your idea, given your research, your reading articles or your crunching numbers or what have you, and then make you have to learn things about our products before you go trade. No, we want you to take your idea to execution as quickly as possible. So I want to hang on that small factor a little bit here and drill into that. And then I'm gonna link back up with Marco and we're gonna take a look at the platform and potentially take a look at a little bit of a, a small exchange trade here in the late afternoon in uh, US trading hours. It'll be interesting what we cook up there, Marco. But before I link back up with him, I wanna show you what I'm talking about when I say efficient capital usage on a small product. So once again, getting back to the start of my presentation, we didn't reinvent anything here. We came to a futures landscape that has you know, great stock products, great commodity products. And we said, there's something missing here wherein there needs to be this efficient capital for stocks and metals and commodities and, and everything, but it needs to be smaller so that the everyday trader or the smaller account size or even the bigger account size that wants to scale up and down has access. So what we saw when we first launched uh, a year ago was futures contracts that give you efficient capital usage, 1% that you have to put up to trade a product, 5% for a lot of these stock products, but it was paired with products that were $50,000, $100,000. Some products right now, for instance, the NASDAQ futures, over $200,000. And so you have the efficient capital, yes, in percentage, but that dollar amount is still uh, making it too exclusive for you to access futures. So what we did is we took that same efficient percentage amount and we attributed it to products that range from $100. We're going to look at our smallest small exchange product, which right now has a product size of $150. And we have bigger products that get as big as a few thousand. I think the largest product we have right now is about $16,000. And so that way you can take part in this efficiency. You can take part in this direct access to foreign exchange and energy and everything else. And you don't have to bite off more than you can chew with these big traditional products. Now, I want to illuminate that further with a couple of animations here, because what you see in front of you is a stock product and the back and forth you've seen over the last several months. And you've got fluctuations that range from $100,000 at the lows to $200,000 at the highs. Those are big fluctuations when you're looking at the long term or even the short term. A lot of these equity index futures moving two or three thousand dollars per day. That red line down there is us here at the small exchange. And you'd say, well, that's just a flat line. There's no opportunity in that. But what we did was we kept the same opportunity of, for example, stocks moving back and forth. We just made it smaller. So instead of a range from $100,000 to $200,000 over the last several months, you got a range of about $2,000 to $6,000. Same opportunity, just smaller size. And you can see this with 
the daily activity for our small stocks product, for instance, relative to other large benchmarks in the equity index future space that move, you know, as much as two or three thousand dollars per day. We've seen some of these moves with NASDAQ, S&P, Dow futures that move uh, on big days, sometimes three or four grand. Our products, almost all of them, whether it's stocks, metals or uh, foreign exchange, and I'll actually just move through them here. It's not enough just to say it. They all move around a hundred bucks. I mean, you maybe you're looking at gold futures, for instance, that move about one or two thousand dollars per day. Ours moves about eighty-five dollars per day, and that's gold, silver, and platinum all in one product. Foreign exchange, very simple U.S. dollar product, moves about seventy bucks per day relative to other currency futures that can move hundreds or even thousands. Talk about Euro FX or sterling or what have you much smaller product there also in interest rates i sound like a broken record here but it's the same deal where you've got smaller movements that you can scale up if you want to get you know three four five hundred dollars worth of daily movement in interest rates you can absolutely scale up and our exchange rates are actually so low that you can do so at a a small efficient cost as well but it's you can't scale down those traditionally big futures and something we're really excited about that'll be launched next month from the exchange that'll be on your uh, tick mill platforms is oil as well this is going to be a big deal you've got the crude oil futures whether it's brent or wti moving you know two three thousand dollars per day ours is going to move a couple hundred dollars per day it's going to be a small oil product there as well and so what's really nice is that, you know, you've got that standardization, same tick size, same expiration. I can jump from asset class to asset class very easily. And the size is constantly looking the same as well. Just, a, you know, between $50 and $200 worth of daily movement relative to these futures that were way too big for the everyday trader. And this is our real, you know, calling card for our futures products is that we reduce the size there. We didn't change anything about the opportunity. When we come through with crude oil, it's going to look and feel like crude oil, but it's going to be a smaller size. So you can directly access that energy market without getting too large or too uncomfortable. And that goes down the line for our whole suite of products currently and what we're going to launch in the future. You can see here some of the current margin rates that are at your disposal, as small as under $100 for this small two-year product. That's the two-year short-term interest rate here in the U.S., which has been you know, in the news a lot as our U.S. Fed continues to try to battle back and forth whether or not they're going to be able to hold rates at 0% as our interest rates in 10 and 30 year, they continue higher. So that's an interesting market here. SPRE, that's our metals market. That's just a few hundred dollars in margin. Same with our technology stocks and the sticks, SFX being our small dollar, just a buck 85 to trade. And the small 10 year, just about $200 to trade. You can access with these efficient margins from the small exchange thousands of dollars in market exposure for just a few hundred bucks. And, and this is really empowering to that everyday trader, to that smaller account size, uh, that not institutionally sized trader to be able to trade all these different asset classes for as little as 60 bucks. And this is when I'd love to rope in Marco here to go to his platform and maybe look at what I think, you know, I love to hear myself talk and educate people on uh, futures and everything, but the best way to learn sometimes is to just try it out. And this S2Y, Marco, I think would be a great spot to maybe pull up the platform and look at um, that S2Y product and maybe just learn from buying or selling one contract and seeing that it moves just like a stock or whatever else that uh, you're used to trading, whereby if you buy it, you want it to go higher. If you sell it, you want it to go lower. And uh, what's really nice is that S2Y product lets you try out futures for really, I, I don't know of a, another futures market that's in existence that's smaller. What do you say, Marco? It's a good plan. Uh, let's do that. I think we can talk the whole day about the amazing products and everything, but um, in the end, it comes down to uh, trading the product. I'm just trying to share my screen. Just bear with me. Um, you are all good, my friend. Um, Zoom is, yeah. is uh, just 
um, lagging a bit. So maybe I'm able to share the right one. And while Marco is getting that up, I, I do agree wholeheartedly. You know, I, I studied mathematics here in the U.S. and um, it was a great four years of uh, studying and learning about different markets, but you really don't know. You could read textbooks on futures and all this stuff, but um, trading it is really the way that you learn about these things. And it's frustrating because those larger futures, uh, learning through actual trading got uncomfortable because you'd be learning through thousands of dollars worth of movement, which is is just not that fun of a process. So I, I really would uh, uh, definitely advocate for you know buying or selling that really small two-year product. It moves just a couple of bucks. I think it has an average daily move of about twenty dollars, and the margin is sixty bucks uh, there. If you try that one out, you could just watch it move higher and lower. It's nothing crazy. If you're bullish on a market like the two-year interest rate, you think that interest rate is going to go higher. You just buy it. You think interest rates are crashing down to zero. You think they're going negative. You sell that product, and it's the same for energy futures, stock futures, and everything else. Um, and that two year is definitely a good place to learn because it's the it's a great combination of low risk and actually practically trying out this new product type. Just uh, can you see my screen, uh, Mr. Fuck? Yes, sir. I got a login page in front of me. Perfect. So that's fine. That's exactly what I need. Um, so for all our clients, uh, when you open a live account or a demo account, this will be the initial screen that you are faced with. That's CQG Desktop, our white labeled version of it. And we already had a couple of clients uh, mentioning uh, that CQG isn't really that user friendly. Uh, what we tried to do is to accomplish uh, and uh, solve this issue is uh, creating a couple of different templates that are user-friendly that also have everything in it that you need for trading. Um, we have also an education section on our website, how to go through our templates, how to use them on a daily basis, and um, yeah, what, what the features are in there. So just feel free uh, to go to our website on tickmail.co.tk under educa uh, Education Hub, there you can find the short videos that uh, we lost a couple of minutes, two or three minutes each. Uh, and I think we have around about 10 videos. So it's easy to learn. It's, uh, as you get into it, it's, it's getting natural. So um, just to avoid any confusion, um, we will stick to this uh, default template. And as you can see, we have uh, groups here with a different small exchange symbols. So these are all available front contracts that are trading at the moment. So I'm not sure, Frank, do you have an opinion? Uh, are you all allowed to have an opinion? <laughs> if not, <laughs> we might we might ask our audience, the chat, if they have an opinion. Um, I mean, I would love to take a look at either that two-year product, just because how small it is, or if we want to look at uh, metals or or uh, the U.S. dollar. I think those are really stock products are great, but uh, where we've really um, cut ourselves uh, different from the the other uh, futures exchanges are some of those innovative interest rate and metals, and like I said, oil that's coming down the line. Um, but I would love to, yeah, get any if if anybody wants to throw in the chat uh, like long uh, interest rates or or short metals or or any uh, opinions that they want to throw out there. And we could just test something out here, Marco. I, I'd be more than happy to listen to sure. all of uh, the great viewers out there. I think it, it's it's a good idea. Um, uh, maybe, Veronica, can you also write down a couple of names? So we might have a small goodie um, after the webinar for some of you that participate. Just write down if we... So we are going, first of all, uh, with the two-year note. Uh, maybe let me... Uh, open the screen a little bit larger. So that's a 30 minute chart on the two year small exchange note. So what do you think, long or short? Keep in mind, we just keep the positions open just for the sake of this uh, webinar. Um, Frank, do you see the chat maybe for me? Yeah, yeah, I got you here. Um, I mean, the two year is a great place to test uh, things out, but it seems like there's some interest in 
Uh, we have one viewer who wants to be short the British pound, which would be long our US dollar uh, product there. I, I wouldn't mind looking at the long SFX. Uh, that's, a, that's an interesting one. Got another person on here who wants to look at the metals market. Uh, maybe we can take that uh, opinion as just, maybe we look at a long uh, metals trade. What do you think about that? Yeah, it sounds great. So let's do that. Metals, uh, let me change. That'll be the SP, yeah. uh, SPME Y21. Um, so let's maybe uh, long, right? Yeah, well, let's so go let's, for it. Let's try to get a fill uh, a little bit higher here. I'm just trying to work in, in the letter. It's probably that we have to lift the offer uh, to get a fill because uh, markets are slowly closing. Yeah, it's an interesting time of the day here. Uh, we have so much so much movement in the metals uh, th throughout the last week or so, but this is quite literally the last few minutes of the U.S. session. So our market makers are uh, getting ready to call it a day. So we might want to just lift that offer with that one lot. And what's really nice is you see the bid and offer here, Marco, of you know three or four ticks wide. And you might say, well, wow, that's, that's a pretty wide bid and offer. That's only three or four dollars there per contract you've got been offer in dow jones futures or s p futures and though they are tighter those are futures that have existed for decades ours have only been around for a few months because we're so you know new and very excited to be here in this uh industry but it's only a couple dollars wide uh in that three penny wide bid and offer so yeah it looks like we got a buy in there at 72 74 already exactly. one penny against us but what's Really great, Marco, is that like now we're trying this thing out. We're trying out futures and these products are so small that you watch them tick for or against you. And it's only a couple of bucks in movement, uh, hopefully creating an experience that's comfortable for people throughout. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't create a lot of stress and it's, it's very simple to, to understand from tick perspective, as you've already mentioned, one tick or one dollar per tick is pretty easy. And I think uh, if we think about the notional value uh, on the metal, what is it? Uh, maybe I think I have to. So the what's really nice is that is website you, open. You, Let me check I, maybe the metal. I appreciate the, the going to the site here because, yeah, we took a lot of time to create this great site. If you want some more information, go to smallexchange.com. But what's really nice with the standardization, Marco, is you can go from one product to the next. All of them are just $100 times the price. So if you go back to your platform, you'll see that as the thing ticks up or down, uh, it's very simple to just say, oh, okay, here at $72.70, that's just $7,200 and 70 bucks there. It's, it's very quick and easy. And that's why you jump to that two year, which is at a buck 50, 1.52. That's just $100 times 1.52. That's $152 product. So all standard, all small. And yeah, we didn't place the right trade here. Looks like we're out about five ticks, but that's only $5. Very comfortable to try out futures here in small exchange. And this is uh, also a contract that is somewhere in the middle, I guess, from all of the contracts that are available. So the two year is very, very small, the smallest of the small, smallest. Yep. And a uh, metal is somewhere in the middle. And the equities are, I think, a little bit larger, if I'm not completely wrong. Uh, but it's very interesting. So you can even have at this, uh, at the different contracts, uh, a lot of difference between the size. And, but yeah, the, no, the dollar values, the tick values uh, stays the same. Absolutely. That's what we really love here is, is to get people trying out futures with that. I love the way you put that. The smallest of the small is that S2Y product. Even if you don't have you know, an opinion on interest rates necessarily, you can try out that smallest of the small futures product. I, I quite literally, I, I don't think I'm gonna get in trouble for this, but I, I don't know of a single futures market that's smaller than our S2Y there. You can at least get a feel for how futures uh, work and how they tick up or down. And then you can go on to bigger products uh, at the small exchange, whether they're metals, or US dollar or that oil product that's coming down the line. And then also, you know, we are absolutely competitive with our other futures exchanges. The CME is just down the street from us here in Chicago. But, you know, 
of course, we want you to uh, take this knowledge of trading futures and this uh, wonderful um, uh, access that Tickmo gives you and, and, and go on to CME products or ICE products or Eurex or whoever. And those are kind of the, the bigger of uh, the big boys in terms of products. So yeah, you start with that smallest of the small, like Marco said, and you can kind of work your way around uh, different products at the small exchange and different exchanges at large. Uh, I've just opened quickly the uh, small dollar index because I think we had another opinion in the chat. So what was it, a short or a long? So uh, yeah, we had an opinion. They wanted to be short British pounds, which actually would be long this US dollar because it is US dollar against Euro, pound, um, Chinese ren, maybe Japanese yen. So maybe we put in a long uh, uh, order here in this US dollar. US dollar, as you can see, has been screaming higher in the last uh, couple of trading days. Uh, we definitely would be jumping on the trend here of long dollars and thereby short British pound. Thanks for that uh, opinion there from, who was that? Uh, Mahavir, thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank loving the much. interaction here, uh, the different trades. And yeah, like Marco said, people that were throwing in some of those trade ideas maybe get uh, a little bit of a goodie from uh, Tickmill and the small exchange after the fact. But um, yeah, this has been uh, great here, Marco. A nice look here at the small exchange uh, products in the platform. Um, it's, it's interesting if you look, um, especially at the beginning of the session, uh, sometimes the small products are even just a, a tick wide. So it's not always that the ticks are getting wider. Uh, at the beginning of the session, in the middle, in the middle of the day, um, here for the dollar example, for example, even at the end of the session, we just have two ticks at the moment. And you can see a little bit of volume. I'm pretty sure there's also some hidden volu volume uh, on yeah. from your market making side. So not all of the spits and offers are, so it's not the total volume that is in there. Um, so you can, you can even go in with larger chunks, I'm pretty sure. You absolutely nailed it there. Yeah, we've been working. Uh, we've only been around for uh, a few months. Like I said, very new and exciting here. Uh, it's uh, not every day, not even every year that a new futures exchange launches. Trust me, there was a lot of work into launching this exchange. But that being said, you know, we're still onboarding more market makers on a daily basis, Marco. And yeah, like I alluded to, a very... Uh, ominous time in the U.S. session here, the least liquid time uh, to jump on with you all because it is that tail end of the U.S. session. And so it is nice, though, to see that um, we still have, you know, yeah, two ticks wide moving up that bid and even lifting that offer. You're only giving up $2 uh, here to do so, even at the tail end of the session, the least liquid time here. So, yeah, um, we'll see. I guess uh, by the end of the, the segment, how this uh, long metals, long US dollar trade uh, shakes out. I actually, that's, a, that's quite a nice little pair. Um, that'll be an interesting one to uh, maybe check back on uh, at the back end of this segment, uh, Marco. Sure. If, uh, if you got anything else, otherwise I can uh, finish things up. And there we go. We lifted the offer and we've got a long US dollar at 46.81. Uh, very cool. Hopefully that... Uh, that bullish run that the U.S. dollar has been on the last couple of days will continue. Um, and thanks again for that input from uh, one of our viewers here today. I hope as well. Just a little note on the margin requirement. So we have two uh, contracts on at the moment. We have this, uh, this uh, dollar position and the metal position. And if you compare it with uh, a micro product, for example, and even though maybe we can also comment a little bit on the basketing of a small exchange and you brought this point a little bit uh, up a little bit at the, uh, before. Um, it's interesting that with this uh, two and a half thousand dollar account, we just have, have a mar margin excess of seven hundred sixty eight dollars. Uh, so we can even still add more. Um, we can add another yield position. We can add an, another tech position if we want to. Uh, so it how I mean that's the exciting part if you think about it where is it possible to get so much exposure in different markets, even if it is basketed, so in silver, gold, uh, yields, uh, stocks, uh, tech stocks, et cetera, with such a little amount of money. And uh, it was, would be also interesting if you could give us also a hint on um, 
how, how much we could maximum lose, even if the index falls to zero dollars. Sure. Yeah, no, th that's a great point there. And it comes from frustration from myself, uh, you know, where when I started trading futures right out of college at the Chicago Board of Trade, and a lot of people on, the, on our team are former uh, professional traders who were just sick of, you know, you're putting together a pairs trade, maybe one equity market against another equity market using old futures that would cost you margin in the tens of thousands of dollars here at the small exchange, it's going to cost you less than a single thousand dollars to get those pairs trades. Or like you said, you know, I want to be maybe long metals, long foreign exchange, uh, short tech stocks, uh, long oil. You're still going to be having some of this uh, capital left over because how efficient these products are relative to those older futures. So, that was our big push there is to make them small from a margin standpoint. And then also, you know, like we talked about with that S2Y, a great place to start out, the smallest of the small. If that product goes to zero, that is $150. That's it. You know, you've got these other futures products, these traditional futures products that some of them, if they go to zero, that's over $200,000, totally unmanageable from the smaller uh, account trader there. It's, uh, it's, it's really been a big push of ours is to take all of these great advantages of futures and just make them easily accessible to everybody. No more accessible only to large traders or institutions that are hedging oil production or institutions that are hedging you know, uh, metals mining or whatever, but make them accessible to everybody. And yeah, I saw right there. So you bought that Small two year at 155. It's a margin under $100. Hard to find, I think, impossible to find in the futures landscape a margin under 100 bucks. And Marco, if that goes to zero, if you're on the wrong side of that trade, at worst, $155. And what's more reasonable, the daily fluctuations in this product, about 20 bucks. So, yeah, if you check this position, 24 hours from now, you should be up or down about $20. And what's <laughs> a little bit frustrating, love your whole walkthrough here, Marco. Unfortunately, we're on the wrong side of all these trades. What happened, man? We're down money in all of them. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I don't think it's good to blame, blame our audience <laughs> for that. I'm, I'm so. totally, totally kidding. Totally kidding. Uh, but, uh, but what's nice is that, you know, we're, it's, we're it's, on. Uh, I mean, it's, it's normal. Uh, the, f the hand that is given is the hand that is taking. Um, it has always been that and it will be in the future. So um, you can't uh, win all the time. But at least maybe one position should be green at the end of the session, hopefully. Uh, yeah. But as you can see, um, we can even add more uh, contracts. Um, there is still some um, margin access left that we could potentially fill up. I, I won't do it now. Maybe it goes into even more into red. So let's keep it with these uh, three positions that we mentioned. Sure. And I think uh, $150, uh, I think we can afford this, Frank. <laughs> no, yeah, In this is what's, case. of course, of course, just joking around there. You know, we, like I sure, said, the sure. tail, tail end of the U.S. session, it's a, a weird time. It's more just nice to see the positions in the platform here and see that, yeah, even if you are, you're red across all three of these positions, we're out less than 15 bucks, man. It's really nice. Uh, to try out futures comfortably with the small exchange products. And uh, with that, we could check back on these at the end. If sure. you want, I can jump yeah. right back in and wrap this thing up, man. Sure. Um, we should also think about the fact that uh, we were quite aggressive in opening these positions. So yeah, we, exactly. were, we did not try to, um, let me maybe try to open Zoom again. Uh, I know it's like, do, 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 do. Where is the? Oh, you are all good, Marco. Yeah, uh, we will hopefully be uh, jumping on with the end of the presentation in a second. But you're totally right that yeah, we didn't for the sake of the presentation, we weren't working any of those orders. We were just lifting offers and hitting bids to uh, get everything uh, in front of the viewer there. When the markets are actually moving in the middle of the U.S session or whenever you're trading, you'll see those markets both tighter and more activity. So you'll be able to work in order and not have to lift that offer. So thanks so much for uh, running through this. And yeah, again, if there are 
any more questions by the end of the presentation here, throw them in. Hopefully we can do a little Q&A by the time my time slot runs out. With that being said, I'm racing the clock. So I'm going to share the screen and get sure. back into this where we left off. Marco, thanks again for that, man. That was a great run through of the platform. Thank you, Frank. Loved it. So let's finish off the presentation here. So from here, I want to give a little bit of a strategic piece. And of course, I'm not going to, uh, in the next 10 minutes, show you, oh, this is the way that you need to trade futures and this is the best way to do it. But I want to give you a little bit of a feeling for where you can lend your research and your trading style to futures because they are built for new traders who are looking to affordably try products like Marco just did and existing traders looking to scale those ideas with just more efficient products and everyone in between. Maybe you've tried a couple stocks, you've tried a couple CFDs or, or anything else and uh, you wanna try out these futures. Everybody, we, we created these products for everybody to be able to access and hopefully enjoy some of the uh, strategy around them. With that being said, you know, speculation in the long term is a huge uh, is a huge point here to hit with the small futures because you know maybe at the start of the year you thought interest rates were going to move higher as they have and you can see here with the s10y product that's the 10-year u.s treasury yield if you had bought that interest rate product at the start of the year you'd be up six hundred dollars a nice chunk of change per contract and if you were on the short side six hundred dollars isn't anything that's necessarily going to maybe break the bank as opposed to you know three months of action in other futures usually in the thousands so six hundred dollars of upside for a, for a long yield position and would have yielded you more than 200 percent in returns uh since 2021's uh start here which is is really powerful, you know, to have an idea on something like interest rates or like our viewer had, you know, short pounds, long dollar and see excesses of 100 or 200 percent in your returns for that speculation. And the same thing goes for short term. And this is what I think is really important for futures trades uh, is short term speculation. That's where we've seen most of our interest. And that's what I'm most intrigued by is day trading, you know, an intraday strategy whereby I'm long or short a position and I'm covering it by the close. This is something that is exclusively accessible with futures because you have those efficient margins and even uh, day trading margins. Uh, at some points, you'll see even uh, smaller margins if you do open and close a position intraday there. And also, you don't have to deal with pattern day trading regulations that you have on a lot of stock and option markets, whereby, you know, say you buy a share of a stock and it goes in your favor that day, you're actually not supposed to close it that day. And if you commit some of these pattern day trading uh, rules here, if you, if you break this rule a couple of times, you're actually going to get flagged and given further restrictions. Futures, no pattern day trading rules. And so you can buy or sell stocks and cover that position in the same day. You can manage that risk and take profits in as, as small as a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes, and not wor have to worry about any regulations. And also with that being said, it's a lot easier to sell in the futures market than it is in a lot of different places where it's costly or sometimes impossible. I'm sure a lot of you saw the news of, you know, trying to get in and buy and sell GameStop or some of these other stocks. Futures don't have that problem. It's very equal on both sides. If you want to be long, it's X amount in margin. If you want to be short, it's the same amount there, which makes it very easy to have long and short biases uh, here. You know, maybe you got to jump on the stock market. And this is an example from earlier this year uh, when we saw a big move lower in equities. You can easily sell and then also cover that position in the same day in a way that's efficient, in a way that's easy there and doesn't cause uh, any concern around further restrictions. Now, why would you day trade? Here, why would you like take a look at small futures for the opportunity of short-term speculation? Well, because it's a different type of opportunity. And I was just talking with a colleague earlier today who was 
uh, in the long term bearish on metals. But given the last 48 hours of selling that we saw in gold and silver, he was looking at the SPRE futures that we just got long for a short term bounce. So this is really, uh, you know, I think empowering to have your portfolio chopped into these different types of opportunity, which can be long term biases and short term speculations, which I think these small futures are perfect for given their small margins and uh, their you know, diversity of asset class. And also this day trading allows for a great risk reduction. When I was trading at the Board of Trade, we actually weren't allowed to go home with futures positions still on. And what that does is that, first of all, takes a lot of anxiety out of your life and your portfolio from having to worry every time you go to sleep. I wonder what these positions are going to look like in the morning. So you're, you're speculating in the short term. It's a new opportunity and you're avoiding overnight risk of something occurring. And lastly, you're diversifying your portfolio from just a bunch of long-term positions there. Oh, I think that stocks are doing this in the next six months. I think that metals are doing this and energy is doing this. You can have those working in the background of core. That's what I would call, I would call, call your core portfolio. But you can also have up to the minute ideas. You know, maybe the uh, the ECB comes out and says something, and you want a quick reactionary trade in interest rates. That's a very different outlook than those long term positions. And futures are great for that with the day trading here. And with all of that being said, speculation comes on the long and the short side, or both maybe in the same day. Now, how do you find whether or not you want to be long or short? At the end of the day, of course, that's going to be up to your opinion. I myself am a stats guy. I usually try to look at the numbers, look at uh, what can maybe push the odds from 50% to 55% to 60%. And one thing that I do look at uh, and what's really nice and clean with the standardization of the small exchange products, I look at standard deviations here, which let me know what the average range is. And Marco actually had the Bollinger Bands up, which is the same thing there in your charting package, showing you the standard deviations around uh, the, the price chart. So right there, you can get it in your platform. And what I do is I look for a movement outside of these standard deviations. Once we get outside of what is deemed a normal range or the Bollinger Bands for Marco's platform, that's when stuff starts to get interesting. And that's when I think your opinions and whether you want to be long or short uh, has the greatest opportunity. There's not a ton of great, op I mean, we were just looking at it there. You know, the end of the day here in the US, stuff wasn't moving back and forth, but in the middle of the day, you've got this big move lower outside of this, the normal range, the standard deviation, the Bollinger Band. And then you see all of this back and forth here, all of the, the bounces, the sell-offs, and everything else for you to wrap an opinion and a trade around. And then it just becomes, okay, I've got the products. I've got what I'm looking for, which is a little bit of a statistical range, whether it's the standard deviation or the Bollinger Band. And now all I need is my opinion. Am I a contrarian or am I a trend follower? When stocks sell off, and I, I always joke about this, it's almost like a, a, a Rorschach test. You know, like if, if stocks, if you see a price where the thing is just sunk, do you think it's going to go higher or lower? If you think it's going to go lower, then you're probably a trend follower and that's what you're looking for. Maybe you look for this lower day in the stock market and a bounce back to sell into. If you look at a chart like that of something that's sinking lower and you think, hey, that thing's due for a bounce, then you're probably more of a contrarian and you're looking to buy something at a low price and then sell it back higher, vice versa on a big strong day. We saw a big rally in crude oil today. You'd probably be looking to sell into that rally. What's really nice about short-term speculation, day trading, and the small futures in general is both opinions can be right. There's so much opportunity in any given day as long as you're you know, looking for stuff that is moving and you're working within products that are sized for you and efficiently like the small exchange products are. You can, on this exemplary day, be right from the long side and the short side. And uh, it's a really empowering thing here to have efficient futures 
that are sized well for you, the everyday trader, and uh, start to work them into that portfolio uh, here. I, I, I hope that you all enjoyed uh, this information. You will work these into your portfolio in the in the new the near future because uh, it's been a blast creating the product and. Um, we've seen a lot of people enjoying the uh, opportunities that uh, small stock markets, small metals, and small foreign exchange have to offer. So with that, Marco, I am done spieling about whatever I'm talking about here and uh, can throw it back to you to close this thing out. It's been a blast talking about futures. And uh, please, yeah, go to smallexchange.com for more information on our product specifically. We can go through a couple of questions here if you have any other questions, you can uh, email me at uh, frank at the small and uh, I'll answer your emails there. But Marco, let's uh, run through if there's any uh, questions that you're seeing on your side. Sure. Yeah, we have a couple of interesting questions, especially on the crypto side of things. So okay. uh, all people are very keen uh, on cryptocurrencies. Uh, are you someone planning go into crypto, having a basket of crypto? Or is that something that is completely out of the way? Marco, not only are we planning on it, we have meetings on it every single day. Uh, we're looking to hopefully launch with a small Bitcoin contract that can do exactly what we do in these other asset classes. You know, not invent a cryptocurrency, but invent a product that makes it more accessible and more efficient to trade that cryptocurrency. So yes, those are in the works right now. Uh, in the near view here, we have a small oil product that's uh, due to come out very soon after that, uh, small marijuana and crypto. Uh, so yeah, all of the, the people out there, hopefully you can get your hands dirty with some of these other small futures in the meantime, but we will have that as soon as we possibly can. We talk about it every day. What about the contracts? They're all cash settled. That was one of the questions. So that's absolutely correct. Uh, maybe you Absolutely. want to add a few words to this? Oh, no, that's that's a great question. Love uh, the heady question there. Yeah, cash settled futures here at the small exchange, um, definitely staying away from physically settled. And so what happens is on an expiration day, if you're long or short any of these contracts, after expiration, all that you'll see is your account credited or debited, the difference between where you bought it and where it's settled to cash on that day. And that's it. You know, you have nothing else to worry about, no other obligations. Uh, we really felt that cash settlement was uh, the most practical for the everyday trader. We had also, that's interesting, thank you. We also had a, a few points on the fees. Uh, and I would say, especially also on the market data, um, what about the costs compared to other futures exchanges? So market data is free for small exchange products for now wow. and the for foreseeable future. Yeah, no market data fees uh, for anyone to get onboarded and get up and running trading small exchange products. We're going to try to keep that at zero or as low as possible while also keeping these lights on around me. Um, but yeah, don't have to worry about market data fees for at least the foreseeable future. Uh, transaction fees from the exchange, as low as we could possibly get them. I think they're at 15 cents per contract. We also have a subscription offering that cuts those in half uh, for people who are subscribing. And I'm sure we're going to give these people more information about this, Marco, in the new, near future. So don't worry about that subscription. Just know for right now, uh, yeah, per contract, it's 15 cents uh, for our exchange transaction fees, no market data fees. And that 15 cents, I'm pretty sure, is lower than the micros, the e-minis, and everything else out there in the futures landscape. If we, if we really compare it with others, like uh, it, it comes very close to free trading almost. So you pay a couple of cents uh, and it's even lower than, uh, or, or if we also add our commissions, it's something like it's one, something like one tick of one of the small exchange contracts, um, which is pretty low and there are no market data fees. The only thing that you have to pay is maybe for a platform if you have a, a, a private label or if you want to sign up with CQG. But can you get more real market uh, for for a, a smaller amount of money? I, I I really doubt that. No, yeah, it's it's uh, crazy. We once again, it, it that mission statement that I led off with is truly baked into everything we do at the small exchange: accessibility to everyone, and uh, and and we we bake that into our cost 
as well. I, I, I don't know of another futures exchange that's up and running that has smaller products and smaller costs uh, as well, Marco. So yeah, great question. Glad to field that one. We have another one. Uh, what about because um, most people come from the CFD side and they always have this sure. uh, mindset of they are, tra they are trading against somebody else, a liquidity mm -hmm. provider, or multiple liquidity providers, um, or even a market maker. So how, how does it work with the futures exchange and uh, um, especially on your side? Um, I, who who are, how we, uh, are we trading against with small exchange? So yeah, uh, we have liquidity providers here in uh, the U.S. and actually uh, abroad, but it, it, it isn't this contract for difference or anything like that. It's it's quite literally, uh, and and this is a funny thing that I always encounter is like you're not necessarily trading against anyone because, for instance, our example to start uh, in the middle of the presentation was you know you buy metals and you win if metals go higher and who sold you that metals contract? Yeah, probably a market maker, but they're working, you know, in such granularity, they're looking to offset these positions. So uh, small and so short term um, that it's, it's a scenario whereby hopefully at the end of the day or week, uh, everybody wins because they're looking to take a buck. Maybe you're looking to take $10 and, uh, and in that back and forth, there isn't the, yeah, the CFD I know is a little bit more specific um, with trading against people in the contract for difference. It's quite literally with uh, our metals position that's gotten better. It's gotten better. It was down about $8. Now it's down three, but you just, uh, you just want metals to move higher. Uh, it's not a spread trade or anything like that. Maybe let's keep it on, keep it on for a couple of days and see what happens. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's, that's the outcome. Of course, uh, it's the end of the, sh if, of the session. Uh, it hasn't moved a lot, but still uh, it's ticking and, it makes quite a lot of fun. So uh, I think uh, we also pretty much done with our presentation. So thank you very much for your val valuable time uh, tonight. I, I know for some of you, it's quite late. Uh, for Frank, maybe not. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed the webinar and it brought some value for you guys. And uh, don't forget uh, to look at, your, at, at our education section uh, to learn about our CKG platform. Uh, so I showed you Maybe I show you quickly where to find uh, on our website under Client Tools Education Hub. Um, hopefully it's loading quickly. Yes, so just scroll down to the bottom. There is a CQG education videos. As you can see, if you click to one of them, uh, you have seven to eight uh, videos and it explains you how to navigate through our platform, how to get started with it. So, um, yeah, if you have any other questions uh, to us specifically, uh, feel free to contact our support under support at tickmail.co.uk. And maybe you can also mention your email address once again, Frank. And from my side, I wish you all a good night. Yeah, Thank absolutely. Uh, Frank.caberna. Actually, no, just simpler. Support at the small exchange.com. Uh, support at the small exchange.com. I'll get in there and field all the questions. They'll get forwarded on to me. And yeah, thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you are tuning in from um, hit us with any questions after the fact, Marco, thanks so much for having me. This has been a blast. Thank you, Frank. Have a nice one. Bye-bye. Yeah.